My name is Trisha Lockwood. I reside in Island, New Jersey. I'm going to call, uh, record, um, um, Paula White. Uh, she often slanders God and Jesus, um, airs her own false opinions. Um, and the thing is, she is being used, um, she's winding up, uh, copying my words. I've been actually, I often actually speak against her blasphemies and her false knowledge and completely just, um, well, annihilate them. Um, the thing is, is that, um, what post came up about five hours ago, repeating my words, um, because I basically, um, made a comment, uh, verbally, um, um, m making a statement against my persecutors, saying, I don't need your approval, um, who are basically evil. Now, the thing is, is that anybody has a right to basically speak truth, um, and to destroy, uh, false knowledges, which is what I do, um, and the thing is, is that, um, they're manipulating a situation of a, um, um, pick that I made, um, and, yeah, they, um, rather knowingly or unknowingly, um, uh, she is basically uh, bouncing off a, a comment I made because a false minister, which I feel kind of feel sorry for because, you know, he, he is naive. He's a vulnerable. There's no reason to indicate that he was a deceiver or whatever. But he basically is convinced. Um, he was a young person on, and from a violent Nazarene Raymond church. And he was basically convinced that he was called by God. He was told he was. Um, and basically started preaching the echoing of the false knowledge of, um, um, claiming that God died on the cross. And the thing is, I was actually first persecuted in that, uh, church of the Von Nazarene Remoth Church, um, because I said that God cannot die, God did not die on the cross, I'm not going to accept that. Now, the thing is, they made up lies and said, oh, oh, yeah. Also, called me Catholic, by the way, and it was like they were teach the ones teaching Catholic doctrines, not me. I was speaking against it, um, and the false doctrines also that is taught by uh, the Baptists as well. As I do not believe that Jesus is God, uh, so the Baptists teach that the lies that God is three people and Jesus is God, which is a Catholic lie. Okay. Um, so the thing is, is I was actually persecuted, harassed, slandered, um, and, in this, uh, it was first, uh, called Violent First Church of the Nazarene, um, and I wouldn't accept their false, um, uh, cult, uh, leader, uh, that, a uh, founder, uh, uh, John Wesley, um, and the thing is, is that, um, let me just, let me just get to this, this is the thing. The, this cult leader uh, colludes with the um, uh, William Clay of the Violent Nazarene Raymond Church colludes with the Violent New Jersey Police Department to commit hate crimes against me. The Violent Police Department, though, were committing hate crimes against me prior to um, William Clay, and I actually was in that cult. Um, I left a, a, a few times. I was invited back or whatever um, by a few people, a number of times just encountering people. Um... And the thing is, is that, um, the, 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 this is the thing, <clears throat> the violent New Jersey police department has been committing hate crimes against me for about 25 years, um, for being a victim of domestic violence and basically because I was religious, okay, a religious Christian of faith and, um, the thing is, um, they were basically anti-theist atheists. So, um, Anyway, the thing is, is that, um, I basically made a post, should I, okay, now, let me just record this real quick, because I responded to her post, um, and I put, she's being told what to say, because, let me record this first, I'm gonna record this first, this is five hours ago, let me put the time up there, hold on, okay, I'm gonna record the time, and then I'm gonna take the cursor off, I guess, so, at, hold on, Wednesday, oops, Wednesday, January 5th, 2022 at 8.06 p.m., okay? It says, your calling doesn't uh, need man's approval. God chose you. Now, she basically um, 
Those are basically my words. Okay? And she's being deliberately told to say that. And she is a false minister. And I speak against on, on her page quite often. I'll actually uh, uh, post, um, pull up some things and show that. Um, the thing is, this is my profile pic. Um, and this was... Um, January 4th, uh, at 5, uh, I'll just show it, at 5, uh, 52. Uh, let me just read it first. It says, those who falsely claim that God can be killed on the cross do not know God. Okay? Jesus died on the cross, not God. God cannot die. If you knew God, I'm going to put that, uh, it's in there, but if you know God, you, 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 there's no way that your mind's going to accept God can be killed on the cross. I mean, I write that in here, so it's just like, it's disturbing. It was disturbing then. The first time I encountered it was about around the year 2000, um, and it was taught by a false minister, San Piero. I tried to be kind to him, but he continued to bully me, and I tolerated, actually, I didn't tolerate it. Let me, let me, let me reword that. Um, I endured it, by the, uh, by the way. Uh, I endured his abuse, trying to show him kindness and, um, um, enlighten him about the word of God and the truth and what the Bible actually records. And I was slandered and, uh, bullied by him for like a number of years. Um, they, he even attacked my children. Um, so, I mean, it was really, really disturbing and it was just like, I don't know. I'm going to go on. Let me just read this. Uh, it says those who fought, let me just record it first. <laughs> Right? So. <clears throat> it says, Those who falsely claim that God can be killed on the cross do not know God. Uh, Jesus died on the cross, not God. God cannot die. Those who believe that God can be killed worship a false God that you make smaller than you. I've seen that so many times. It's in their false blasphemous prayers where they literally, literally, the violent Nazarene with church false pastors, they literally make these prayers. And it's really disturbing when you hear them create this false version of God. Not only that, that they instruct and even claim they give God permission and make this, this false God that they created that is smaller than them and less than them that they themselves rule over. This is literally in their words. And I, it was just like, it's really disturbing to listen to. So uh, the other person I've heard do that is from the Calvary um, Chapel, uh, Violin uh, Calvary Chapel, uh, which was basically made a, a chaplain in Violin, New Jersey Police Department because of his abusive doctrine and his false doctrine in silencing victims and attacking victims of domestic violence and victim blaming. So um, they deliberately, he was an anti-theist, he is an anti-theist anti atheist um, who actually condemns religion and knowing that religion is basically uh, the laws of God, uh, which he said, and he condemned that. Um, he Every time I've taught Christ to him um, in rightful context, rightly interpreting uh, the word of God that is recorded in scripture, he would call me religious. Well, yeah. So it was the same abuse. I basically experienced that in the violent first church of Nazarene where... It was just like they would teach this abusive false doctrine that basically just refused my rights and my existence. Slandering me, putting a lie on like anything I said. And then basically if you correct them using the gospel word that Jesus spoke to correct them, they will sit there and say, oh, it's not about our religion. It's about relationship. Or it's not about religion. It's about relationship with Jesus Christ. After I spoke the the message of Christ to them against their abusive, evil, false doctrine. So, um, they actually spread that, like that behavior has been going on and on over and over. And abusive people are doing the exact same thing, cookie cutter, where to ignore any, the rightful message of Christ Jesus. And they will sit there, um... If you speak the message of Christ Jesus and you're speaking a false doctrine, 
against Christ Jesus. That is evil. And if you correct them, um, they will sit there like, oh, it's not, it's not about, um, religion. It's about relationship. So it, it's basically a perversion. Um, uh, that's how you tell basically the person is an evil soul. Um, uh, just very epistemophobic. Um, and, uh, I'm going to go on. So, um, because I got to rush this video, I got other things to record. This is the thing. So, the thing is, is, you know what? I should actually look up Paula White's. I'm going to do that real quick. Um, it's in my files. So I'm just going to look up Paula White. Because I've actually... Oh, wrong place. My cursor went to the bottom. Hold on. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm going to record um, some things um, of Paula White's um, blasphemous post. Um, it's basically her controlling, you know, her, her prayers are not by the kingdom of God, um, not Christian. Um, and though they may sound good, you know, um, but if you dis are discerning and you can discern them, um, it's it's very vain. It, this is not how you're supposed to pray, and because it's not centered in the kingdom of God. Um, so she uses God's name in vain, Jesus' name in vain, and says in the name of Jesus, in the blood of Jesus. This whole blood of Jesus, I, you know, I, I understand the whole term blood of Jesus in the Bible, but they sit there and say, oh, by the blood of Jesus, you know, and things like that. Um, they're not even talking about Jesus. Um, they use the word uh, blood of Jesus or Jesus very loosely and just put it on um, their own false opinions. So, um, unfortunately, I didn't put the time up here, but this was, you can actually search this. It was probably like, I don't know, a month or so ago. Um, it could be a month. It could have been a few weeks, um, a couple months, a few months. So, um, this is one of them. Um, I'm just going to um, record it. This is what I'm going to do. Okay, so that's actually a post. Paula White is a liar, praise to the devil, and often uses Jesus' name in vain purpose. Uh, this is proof that Paula White is delusional and not Christian. So, um, that's another thing. These uh, false abusive um, cults will sit there if you correct them, call you delusional. Um when you expose their delusion. It's a cult abuse I've I've encountered in my town, even among police, from church church leaders to many of their abusive um um whatever. So I'm I am i am gonna actually read this. Um this I just wanna let you know that Paula White is being used um to promote um um false doctrines and she's being told to read repeat these things and these are cult abuse and um the bible does not speak against fear um they pervert scripture where it says fear cast out i mean i'm sorry faith uh cast out uh fear and that is fear of the law um they don't understand that they're perverting it but they're actually doing this to basically attack anybody who disagrees with them or anybody um um, who basically, uh, lives in fear because they're basically a victim of domestic violence or, you know, from a child to a woman to even, you know, even men, but, um, you know, and things like that who live in fear, um, under like oppression and, and, and injustices and abuse and things like that. So they just isolate the word and basically just said, if you, you know, uh, all together, if you have fear or, or doubt that, um, um, that you're not of God, okay? And it's a cult abuse tactic. And um, it's basically <clears throat> meant to bully and harass and slander victims um, and basically speaks against natural law. Now, our Bible does not say that. Now, they, they sit there and they have doubt counsels. Okay, let me just record it first. Hold on. And record also what I said in response. Okay. So when it's basically um, 
spoken by a liar and it uses these things like i'm i'm completely aware about fear and the law and all these things or whatever um i know what it teaches i interpret the bible correctly but they just single out these words and basically oh claim and just like impair discernment and do these things and um it's really really disturbing um so she makes up a lie said fear leads to doubt <laughs> doubt counsels faith and opens the door to unbelief which is this is a disposition of god that leads to rebellion she's already in rebellion against god this is a gross perversion of um um how do i say this um of scripture and no of course you shouldn't doubt god don't doubt god like if you if you desire righteousness, don't doubt right righteousness that's what that means um, but yeah, of course, I doubt, doubt her perversion of scripture. Um, but they, that was another abuse tactic to pervert and single out the word doubt and put a different meaning on it. Um, it's kind of like that movie Doubt. When it's talking about, yeah, they're trying to sit there and promote propaganda and the word uh, like no gossiping. Um, uh, to sit there and try to cover up child sexual abuse and vilify victims. Um, and that's exactly what it's doing. Um, so, um, I'm going to go on. Uh, we're going to flesh out the body. So I'm going to this. Okay. Okay. I just, that my response here is, uh, kind of, um, sarcastic a little bit, but, um, this is another one. So, I mean, there's been a whole bunch throughout the years. I mean, her posts are just nothing but lies. Um, so, we're going to record her video. Wait, hold on. Let me see. Okay, so, this is the thing. Paula White, Paula White taught the lie, abusive, call abuse, um term of unconditional love which is often used by cult abusers to justify and claim that they're under grace why they're lying um and all these things um and uh justify their evils or whatever and um that's all their answer is if you confront their abuse or their lies or their evil false doctrines they'll just sit there and like god's love is unconditional so P paula wright white is the one who actually promoted one of the uh, ones who promoted this scam of god's love being unconditional to justify their um evils or whatever so they make up their own false doctrines um that is against the doctrines of De jesus christ so the thing is is you know what hold on let me just put this to highlight this oh. all right uh all right so i'm actually going to record this one um let me just go back to her hold on all right so i should i should record her first um i'm going to record her video first um well, you know what no i'm not gonna i'm not gonna do um hold on i just open up my uh all right so this is me oh my gosh all right i had pop-ups so um i just want to let you know <clears throat> i spoke against this uh, actually a number of times but my cult abusers, by the way, trying to justify their own um, um, abuse, crimes committed against me, and slander, um, um, bullying, um, and slandering God also. Um, they try to promote unconditional love. Um, and the thing is, is that... Alright, so I'm going to um, record this. And this was actually made in August 5th, 2020. Um... Uh, warning people about um the set the lie of um unconditional love put on a condition on their victims refusing their rights only to violate and is against god's law of love that protects life okay so um all right let me try to get all that in there Alright, so, um, <laughs> I'm 
so that's August 5th, 2020. Um, I do have ones before that because, like I said, this is, they've been doing this for, like, many years, my cult abusers. Um, and so, the thing is, she actually perverts, um, a passage, um, from Matthew 6, 33 and completely per perverts it, claiming it's speaking against worrying. It does not. Um, I just actually put it on my page and let me go to it real quick. Um... And the thing is, I've actually have, um, hold on. No, let, me, let me record these also. But I'm just trying to get, I reposted. So, the thing is, I dealt with this whole thing because I was a victim of domestic violence and I reached out, um, uh, for support or whatever. Um, yeah, in a church that was abusing me, whatever. And they just abused me for that and vilified me and, and re-victimized me, um, blaming me. Um, it was really, really sad. But they were basically um, saying that, oh, well, I'm sinning against God and not of God because I, I worry. And if I speak against their abuse, oh, you're worrying, so you, so you're not you're not of God, you know, oh, you're not of faith, um, and trying to pit worry against faith. So the thing is, is that um, it's an abusive um, tactic. And um, so when I was viewing this, um, this is actually. I don't go to her page. I actually just get her. Sometimes I do. I'll click over. So I'm not well aware. I mean, she just posted on actually January 3rd. I want to record that. But the thing is, is that this is the same passage that I've been using for years to explain because they um, uh, basically are, speak against worrying, um, and basically concerning yourself about things that are going on in the world, speaking against wrong and things like that, and they'll sit there and start condemning you for being a worry and basically of sin. Does our Bible say that? No. Um, they isolate, do not worry. Okay? Um, so, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna record this first. Let me just make my screen smaller um i'm gonna record this um and i just put these verses up here to use in uh connection to recording uh paul paul white's um um perversion of scripture um which actually shows that she does not know god um all her slanders against god exposes her not knowing god um using god's name in vain um and and okay let me just um go on i'm just going to record this <clears throat> Okay, I just posted this to put in front of me for notes. Okay. So notice in 34, you can read the full context, but this is for 34. It says, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about its own things. It says tomorrow. Okay. Sufficient for the day is it, I'm sorry, day is is its own trouble okay so the thing is is and this is like therefore i say to you do not worry about your life okay and of course there's supposed to be an italic here uh there should be uh look these scriptures were not written with commas and periods and all these other things or whatever so they were later they wrote them straight so um um this is actually later in life so um it says, therefore, do not worry about uh, your own life, what you, sh what, I'm sorry, what you will eat or what you will drink, uh, nor about your body, what you will put on, what you will put on, okay? It's not like, if, it, I'm sorry, is not life more than food, okay? And the body the body more than clothing. They're not hearing it. And no, none of these churches have ever taught this correctly. So there's life, the body, and clothing. What Jesus did and is a continual theme throughout all of his teachings is to, and throughout Paul's reflecting the gospel and understanding this how I know that Paul is true, not because it's written in the Bible, but I had to find, did he understand the kingdom of God? The thing is, these people claim the kingdom of God. They'll, they'll quote one scripture or whatever and claim uh, they're of the kingdom of God and claim God. And the thing is, um, everybody, whatever, their own, look, whatever people's beliefs are is their God. That's the reality. 
So they, they, they can sit there and claim their own uh, false kingdom, the kingdom of the world, the exterior, okay, is basically um, the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is within you, okay? So, and yeah, that and within you, that could be like, oh, your false ideas, or the kingdom of God is the core center of the spirit of truth within you, okay? So let me read on. You can read the whole thing in context because I, I am cut for time um, in, in, in these videos. So, therefore, do not worry saying, what shall we eat? Now, the thing is, it doesn't mean, mean like, oh, well, we're going to eat today. That's not what it's talking about. Listen very carefully. And I, and I, I use these verses together because I want to point out what it's saying. Therefore, do not worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? I just want to open up the whole thing. <sighs> Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient is the day in its own trouble. Do you understand? It's about the present. That's what it is. Because the thing is, the present, whatever happens in the present changes the future in every walk that we uh, every um choice that is made do you understand and there's a lot of people yes who will worry about things that have not happened yet right who worry about things that that um um how do i say this um that do not exist so jesus was bringing a focus inwardly in the present in the now do you understand? Now, I mean, there's a lot of churches, even the false churches and all these false evangelists. I mean, I've heard it even when I was a kid, even though they taught a lot of false teachings. But one thing I did like, and I heard it from Christy Lane, um, and, you know, and she sang a song one day at a time. Now, the thing is, they use it in the air or whatever. Um, it, I don't know if it came from that or not. I don't know. But the thing is, this is the same concept. It's one moment, I actually say one moment at a time, okay, and, uh, so it's like one, uh, one day at a time, or one thing at a time, and things like that, so, Paul White does mention, like, a little glimpse of that in her, um, claim, in her teaching, but, um, she still is not understanding, she's completely perverting scripture and speaking against worry, it says no, it says today has its own troubles, Okay, so the point wasn't about the clothing and the point wasn't about what not to eat and what not to wear. It was a step to where you put your focus in. Do you understand? To where you put your mind in from within to the body, to the spirit, to the spirit of life, to the body, to uh, the clothing. Do you understand? So uh, these are original teachings of mine, by the way, and no, none of these churches have taught it. Okay. And yes, basically they have taught, obviously, as I've said, one day at a time. Somewhat gives a message. It does not necessarily mean, though, um, that they're basically of the kingdom of God or basically um, what they put first. It's sort of like people trying to speak against works and not understanding that Paul was speaking about faith producing works. So it was actually put in order that is recorded in the book of James that faith produces works, not works in faith. So I have a lot of people like, oh, that's works, that's works. Like, they'll attack you for, like, doing good, speaking about doing good and all these things or whatever. And it's just like, that's not what it says in our Bible. That's not what um, Paul was speaking of. P Paul un understood it because he made an expression, faith establishes the law. So I have a lot of people, these people, who were persecuting me of the fraudulent Pentecostals and Calvary Chapel, and they're trying to pit faith against the law. The faith is not against the law. That's not what Paul was saying. Okay? So, Paul was in the same spirit, the exact same spirit, cookie cut, in the same of, you know, the faith within produces the works. It's where to put the focus in. So, it is the same reflected in the teachings of Jesus. So, Paula White basically perverts and twists scripture, like all of the churches do. Um, and they make up these, rule, these rules. Oh, you're not of God if, you're, if, you're, if you worry. That's not true. Jesus worried and concerned himself with a lot of things about people. 
Jesus worried when he was about to die. But the thing is, that was a knowing. And the point is, basically worrying about things that you have not known that happened or whatever. Because as people can set themselves up um basically to uh worry about things um that you know um didn't happen and all these other things or whatever it's about focus so she basically speaks against anxieties also now you can have anxieties for things that is like not happening not there didn't happen and you project like this thing that what could happen now i'm not against putting out probabilities and possibilities and taking caution at all. Um, I mean, if you're walking around in a dark cave, you got to be care careful. You know what I'm saying? So um, the thing is, it's just that, you know, you got to be on a defense. You got to have uh, be, um, um, you know, there's going to be, you know, an anxiousness or whatever. Anxiety is not a sin. And a lot of these cult abuses try to claim that anxiety is a sin. No, they're sitting there trying to use the word anxious. No, it says, do not be anxious for the things of the world. Do not be anxious. Uh, it's basically talking, there's actually, there's an opposite opposite. About being anxious for things of life. Being anxious for... Um, uh, let me just look that up real quick. <laughs> I mean, I just looked it up a little while ago when I was listening to her. Anxious. Okay. Um, I did write about it before because I, I had people sitting there trying to claim that the Bible oh, speaks against anxiety as being a sin. That's not true. Um, it's not true at all. Um, uh, okay, that's reflective in Luke. Let me see. Um, let me see. Okay, a concern for a child. He's there to look for um, uh, the term when they're.